dear audiences, members and friends of NPU, and all arts and audiences, people from all over the world, from Europe and even US. It's so nice to see you all gathered here today in Oslo for the annual NPU conference. The number of visitors is all-time high this year. Normally, we would gather around 250 people. And this year, we've seen an influx in people arriving, both from all of Norway, but also internationally. So this year, we have 385, was the last number, yeah? Uh, delegates from 14 countries. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Many of you belong to our international networks, the Audience Europe Network and the Nordic Platform for Audience Development called Art and Audiences, a name after a conference series that NPU initiated in 2011. Art and Audiences was introduced by NPU in Norway in 2011 as a three-year project conference. It, the first took place in Bergen, the cradle of NPU. And the next year, the conference visited Stockholm, in Helsinki in 2013, Reykjavik 14, Copenhagen 15, and Gothenburg last year in 16. Audiences Norway financed and produced the first three conferences, while Center of Art and Interculture in Copenhagen took the conference to Reykjavik and to Copenhagen, and finally, Republic, the audiences Sweden, produced the edi edition last year in Gothenburg. And now the conference returns to Norway, to Oslo, where it meets the NPU conference. Two conferences merge this year into one, and that is why we've named this event NPU Conference 2017 Meets Art and Audiences. It's been produced by Norsk Publikumsutvikling, Audiences Norway, in cooperation with NPU member Dansen Sus and NPU survey partner Opinion AS. And we're grateful for the support from both Akershus County, the city of Oslo, and the Arts Council Norway. And we look very much forward to the uh, reception at the Rådhuset later this evening and also to Henne Unstad Center, Art Center tomorrow evening. As you might know, and as you might read more about in the editorial of the program catalog, NPU has been through a rather tough period uh, the last, of restructure the last year. And now it's up to the NPU members themselves to take responsibility for audience research and capacity building. The influx of new members to NPU during 2070s, and the growing demand for audience insights and advice that we see is a great encouragement to NPU, as it is this number of uh, conference delegates this year's conference. This together gives us reason to believe that there are more reasons to NPU to exist now, maybe, than it was back in 2009 when it was established in Bergen and soon got included on the state budget. The level of public funding within art and culture in Norway compared to Europe is high. But it's reason to believe that we are entering an era of less public funding also for the arts in Norway. There will be probably more competition for existing audiences and there will be more reasons to invest in market insights and sharing of best practices in times to come. There is, as our director puts it in the editorial for the catalog, limits to how many times high-frequent visitors can go to museums, theaters, or concert halls. There will be a need to persuade new groups of audiences to take part. And we believe in the importance of a national member organization like MPU, building and sharing audience insight and best practices across genres and across geographical areas. And with those words, it's a pleasure to welcome Indre Handlan, our director on stage, also the curator of this year's program. Indre Handlan, the floor is yours.
fantastic to see you all. <laughs> the MPU conference is uh, the biggest event in the MPU calendar during the year. And uh, it's a big day, truly big day for us and for me to, to finally be here with you. It's been a lot of work, but it's, uh, it's uh, really rewarding to see all of you here. We're really proud of the program and that everybody came and we really look forward to share this with you. We are, as uh, you might know, a small administration, but with a big organization, many organizations behind us, 151 members right now from all over the country. And we have a very ambitious purpose. NPU's purpose is to increase knowledge about audiences by which we will contribute to fostering increased participation in our members' cultural and artistic programs. Now, how about that? It's a quite big ambition for a very small organization, but with all of you behind us, we might succeed in going forward. The MPU conference is one of our four main activities. In our seven years of existence, we have been making and visiting conferences all over Europe and the US to be able to take home insight and tools and to connect with experts in the field. The Arts and Audiences Conference, uh, as she just told you, uh, was originally uh, produced in, in Bergen, uh, inaugurated there, established in 2011. And the MPU Conference uh, uh, was established in 2013. Both platforms have grown into important places for sharing of knowledge and practice. Um, this year, when we meet here in Oslo, I really encourage you to take the opportunity to connect to new people and to learn and be inspired by your colleagues. This is a platform for sharing, and don't be shy to ask the experts. Uh, they fly in during the day and also tomorrow. Don't be ex uh, shy to, to, to go up and talk to them. They, they have lots of really interesting knowledge that they cannot... Uh, providing like 10 minutes or 20 minutes in a keynote on stage. Another important MPU service is Audience Insight, of course. Commissioned by members and in cooperation with our survey partner, Open Union AS, we conduct surveys all over the country. We are slowly building a picture of how different groups of people engage with art and culture in Norway. We see some patterns and discover some peculiarities we form new hypotheses and we are moving forward, but we are far from having all the answers, of course. Even if Norway is a country with a high degree of equality, uh, we see differences in participation patterns that relates to especially gender and age, immigration background, and what one might call cultural taste. I will come back to this more in detail when I give my presentation in the next session. Uh, the MPU award was established in 2014. Uh, since then, we have been providing a platform for sharing of best practice uh, of audience development. The objective of the award is to identify, analyze, honor, and share these best practices, and also next practice. You might have noticed we have come up with a new category that we, where, we sh where we want to, to show off initiatives that are not yet proven to, to work, but that, that's really um, uh, ambitious uh, uh, initiatives. So this year we actually um, uh, conducted uh, 39 in-depth interviews uh, with different members. We spoke to 60 of them uh, around their activities, because as an, as an MPU member, you, have, um, you are entitled to an annual, uh, annual counseling conversation. And 60 of our members took the opportunity to, to talk to us. So we ended up nominating 12 uh, candidates for the award. And Egil Bjørnsen, head of the jury, will explain uh, how these uh, categories uh, are defined later when we introduce the speed dating session that, we are, that runs between two and four in the afternoon. In this speed dating session, you can uh, uh, meet all the different 12 candidates in different rooms in this area. Finally, the fourth area of activity in NPU is NPU consultancy. It's the sharing of insights and best practice through workshops and lectures for spe specific members. And there is a growing demand for counseling based on the MPU analysis, of course, 
and we were just about to make some serious moves towards recruiting advisors when the budget happened last year, in October. So, uh, yes, 2017 has been a difficult year of transition. The government withdrew their support, arguing uh, that it should be up to MPU members themselves to take responsibility for audience research and capacity building. Uh, we actually agree on that part. Of course members should, and they are. In 2016, 60% of MPU's income came from members. The question still remains open, it remains open, why the government doesn't support the learning that goes on between the institutions. Is it because they think that the knowledge sharing so far didn't um, change much? And that there is a need to take even more drastic actions, like reducing funding, for the institutions to become more audience-focused? The answer to that will probably be given in more detail when we, when we see the upcoming white paper on culture. Which role will be assigned to the big cultural institution, the typical MPU member, all over the country in the future? NPU's vision is a society in which arts and culture institutions are important third spaces in the lives of an even broader spectrum of people than they are today. We believe in the power of institutions like museums, theatres, libraries and concert halls as platform for development of individual identity and sharing of insight on how to be human, thus fostering democracy and coexistence. We believe in social responsible arts and cultural institutions with a degree of uh, with a high degree of public trust and funding. Trust depends on dialogue, participation and cooperation. And this is precisely what audience development is about. Audience development goals should derive from your purpose and not be set by government or any other funders. Based on our mapping of the sector, we see that real measurable change in the audience mix often depends on new visionary leadership, a clear strategy, measurable goals and a shared understanding of those goals through the organization. Everybody needs to be on fire to reach new audiences, not only the marketing director. Even if we are about to leave behind this year of transition, we are actually expanding in many ways. The conference and the prize is bigger than ever. We have a growing network of members behind us and a whole uh, network of friends coming from all over Europe and the US. One of our closest friends is a good friend of mine also and a partner in crime, Nils. Please come up on stage. <laughs> so you were there, you were one of the players in the Nordic field when Han, Christ Han Christian Tolden uh, started the whole business in Bergen. Mm -hmm. I was. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. What a wonderful crowd. You're looking good from here, you should try that. I have Just to put my glasses on so I can even see yeah, you, you guys. Yeah, you should. It's really, you, you see all these colours fitting in, there's a big patchwork really carpet. Them. You can't see them? Oh, <laughs> no. I can see them. I got new glasses, maybe that's why. Yeah. It's really a pleasure being here, and it's a pleasure for many reasons actually. One of them being, being member of a still growing network of people knowing what they're talking about. Because when we started this with Han Christian seven years ago, we went from the assumption that there was a field that we needed to know about, that we needed to dig into, that mm. we needed to engage in. Now, in this seventh edition of the conference series, The Arts and Audiences, we still need to, to get to know a lot more than we do, but we have started to understand the things that we didn't understand before, and that is, is in itself such an achievement. Because for a cultural network or for a cultural sector, the more you know through analysis, reports, research, practice engagement, case studies, whatever, 
the more you can actually change. Then you know the apparatus that you need to implement. So to set things on fire, you need to get the buses, the heads of directions, the curators, the people that seem to be here in this room, gathered at least once or twice a year to, to just to get into a deeper, more profound conversation about arts and audiences. And speaking of conversation, this the conference is, uh, has two languages at least, uh, Norwegian and English. So this first day is, uh, as you might have seen, mainly uh, Norwegian speaking, but there, there is a, uh, an English uh, parallel session running all yeah. along. For those of you who, who might not have seen enough Scandi-Noir television series to really understand the logics of the Scandinavian and Nordic languages, you can follow <laughs> me and we will try to translate it into English. Yeah, so the thing is that all the English sessions today is running at Martallen, uh, uh, next door. Uh, tomorrow the, the conference language is basically English, uh, so then everything runs in English except actually two breakouts. Um, uh, yes. So, with that introduction, I think all of you guys who, who are participating in Nils Righolt's uh, session Connect... Should follow me. ...should actually follow him now and go over to Martal, and we will continue here from now on in Norwegian. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy your session.